and welcome to Let's Fly VFR everyone and today we're going to have a look at something that is quite basic to VFR pilots and that is visual referencing and that's referencing lots of little things but primarily forgetting about that artificial horizon in the middle and looking at that black line that's on the screen now your horizon that's what it's there for it's for there for you to reference so when you uh, hoofing down the, the runway to take off you'll have that gap there. When you start your rotation at about 55 knots, then your nose will come up and probably approximate that black line. It'll be just coming up to touch and let's have a look and see how that goes as I take off here. Being power on, everything else is set up. No flaps on. Accelerating well into the white, coming up to 50. Just lifting the nose up a little. And you can see there the nose has come up a little bit. Now look at the distance. The top of that um, compass there is sitting now right on the horizon. And that's what it's all about. It's looking at those visual cues for your flying and not looking inside the cockpit all the time. VFR, visual flight wheels, is all about looking outside, guys. So now as we're climbing out here, we're sitting and you can see where that horizon is roughly, you know, that black line just giving you a general idea. You can see that the nose is well above the horizon. And the speed is steady. We've got that set at about the proper the VY, which is about 76 knots or so in the, uh, in the Cessna. So it's all about looking at those and remembering what... You know, when you're trimmed out, what speeds do you get as well? What speeds do you get when you're at full power, what speeds do you get at 2200, 23, 24, 2000 RPM? These are all things that are worth remembering because if you have your um, your speedo decides to die on you, your um, you know, speed indicator, how are you going to know what your, your cruise speed is? How are you going to know what your landing speeds are? How are you going to reference all of those things? Looking at an artificial horizon, isn't really going to help you guys. So, now this is some of the challenges. You might think, oh, well, why bother? It's a sim. But if you're going to fly the fly X Plane 11 as a simulator and not just as a game, and I think there's, now it doesn't matter which way you go, I'm not saying anyone is wrong, but if you're flying to simulator practice like I do, you know, I use it because I can't fly at the moment because I live overseas, so I don't live in Australia at the moment, and I can't fly aircraft. So, the best way for me is to use X Plane 11, X Plane 11, because I believe it's probably the closest I've been to in a real world sim I mean, that uh, I can practice these sorts of things. And uh, so, what we're going to do here? We're flying out over Gawler, which is my home airfield and we're heading out north and then we're going to head across into the training area which is everywhere over to the right okay, so we're going to head over there in a moment and we've got the Z zoom level 19 guys so the, the terrain looks pretty nice and the other thing I've done if you saw my last video on um, oh, let's have a look again just getting back to the subject that line there you can see where we're pretty much full power and we're pretty much maxed out at our current weights and everything and you can see again the distance between whatever you want to use as a reference you know, whether it be the, um, the top of the compass or wherever it might be there's got to be something on there now you can see as we turn right there if we're sitting in the pilot seat our eye line is just right on that horizon at the moment on, on a gentle turn if we are doing a much steeper turn let's say we're doing a 45 degree turn or 60 then our actual point of view will be above the horizon if you're on the left seat but if you're sitting over on the right seat it'll be below the horizon so all of these things you've got to take into account if you're flying you know in the sim or in real world um, you've got to look at all these things and uh, just having a look here at, at speeds now if we bring the rpm back a little bit what I've done is I've got the uh, the autopilot on because that's going to automatically trip. That just makes the whole um, pro whole, whole process a little bit quicker instead of trying to manually do it. You wait for me to do it. So let's um, fly along. But what I would highly recommend you do 
Now I've bought it back to 20, 2300 there, 2300 RPM. Let it settle, see what speed you have, and then set your trim, you know, once your trim's set up, trim yourself for level flight and, uh, and see what you've got. And go through that process so that you can fly level flight and all the way back to say 70 knots so that if you're coming back and you haven't got any speed indicator at all and you need to land, you want to fly an approach at 70 knots, then you can do that. It's going to help you a lot more. There's a lot more to it, okay? That's pretty simplistic. Now, as you can see here, we're on the right-hand side and our point of view is now below the horizon. Whereas so we slide back, we're probably on the horizon at this, this shallow bank angle. Now, if we increase the bank angle a lot more, we would then be probably up above it a little bit so let's just clear around before we move on we're just moving around so we can get back towards the circuit so again just visual lines just visualizing where we are you know where's your eye line so it's right on the horizon now we've got the rpm back a little bit further now so we can reference the speed on that we're probably about 110 knots now or you can just look at the distance above that, cowling, whatever it might be. You'll just get used to it if you're going to fly VFR. And I, you know, I think it's a great way to fly. You spend all your time looking at instruments that you don't get to see what's outside, do you? We've got some really great scenery here on X-Plane 11. And if you take the time to do a little bit of uh, ortho work, it's even better, isn't it? So, I think... We've probably covered enough of that. I think it's about time we head back towards the airport. That only needs to be a quick, quick little trip around, doesn't it? So we'll get our speeds back a little bit more. Now you can see we're coming back uh, to the top of the white zone, 80 knots. So, and you can see we're about 2,000 RPM. So if you were going to fly a circuit and you were flying level, uh, it's, sorry, it's about 90 knots there, that would be a really great place to be. Have yourself trimmed out level, coming at a thousand feet above the ground level, AGL, and, uh, and fly your circuit. Now we'll just slow down a little bit more. So we're back down to about 1700 RPM. Now remember, as you slow down, it does have an effect on the engine a little, and it'll probably lose a little bit more on the RPM front. So you might need to just push it back up again once you get to the speed you want. back to about 70 knots now and we're sitting just under 1500 rpm so i'm just going to wind the rpm up a little bit it'd be nice to have a an approach speed of about 70. because remember once you get an airplane trimmed it'll remain at that speed if you remove a, another 100 or 200 rpm it will maintain the speed but it will descend a little in the process Okay, um, there's, there's plenty of rules, rules of thumbs depending on the aircraft that you're on, but see my nose has just risen a little bit there. But if you maintain a level flight and a set RPM, if you reduce the RPM a little bit more and maintain the attitude, because the attitude remains your speed, then the power will control your descent rate. So you can get a, a moderate descent rate set up and you can come and land even if you don't have uh, any sort of speed indication because it's broken or you've flown into a bird or there's a bug flown into it and it's now stopped it or whatever it might be all these things can happen so i just challenge you have a look at it it is you might say oh, a little bit mundane can't be asked but it is certainly worthwhile doing if you're going to take your flight training uh, realistically because you will need to do it in whatever you go flying and if you happen to go out and fly Cessnas or Jabiru's or savannas or sunrise or whatever it might be that you like so let's go back and do our landing so here we are on approach back to runway 13 at Gawla we're all set up and flying in you know over the top a little bit of cloud and stuff around today you can see the glider up there, we just missed that. And uh, we're heading back in. Now the wind's blowing a little bit right to left and I haven't corrected it so well. Here we go back in the cockpit again, so. 
little bit on the quick side as we come in over the top of the numbers. Now all the grass and stuff here as well, just as a note, um, is all stuff that you can do. Okay, but on there now, I've just flared. See how the nose has come up to the horizon again? I'm just holding that flare, and I need a little bit more rudder actually because, but I've let I've flown it back to the right a little just to get back on the on the runways. There, so we're down. Nose is still up. Just gone down now. A little bit of aerodynamic braking, and get the real brakes on. And we haven't done too bad. We're uh, we're stopped before we get to the intersection. So let's cruise on in. And another thing I did there was I just practiced that landing without having any flaps because, again, that's another one of those things that can fail. So I hope that was helpful. Just a quick one for our uh, Wednesday flight school. So remember, get out, test your aeroplane out, see what your speeds are, see what your attitudes are, turning left, turning right, whatever it might be, and enjoy your flying and explain. So until next time, I'll see you again back here on Let's Fly VFR, and have a really great week. Catch you again soon. Bye-bye.